Oh, hello there. As you can see, I've come across recent wealth. Now, how did I do this? <laughs> Allow me to weave you a tale of excellence. And here we have every single cereal company in existence, starting at $500 billion. Hey, does anybody have like five bucks for the vending machine? Sold to the man in red. Slight issue is, I'm now billions of dollars in debt. This isn't even my tux, I just got the free trial. Man, I still thought I had a day left on that thing. Somehow, I have to find a way for these cereal companies to turn profit. If only I knew someone who was tyrannical, evil, diabolical in their business making decisions. I think I know just the guy. Hi, this is Founders Possibly Illegal Weaponry and Water Shop. Are you in the mood for some hydration and ammunition? Maybe later. But Fonder, I need your help right now. On a scale of 1 to 10, how ruthless is your decision making? I don't know, like a 4? It depends on what episode of Family Guy is rerunning that night. I'm in some real trouble. I need a way to get my cereal stocks way up! Any ideas? Well, I always did want to find Kirby in my box of tricks. Ah, cereal. America's favorite breakfast. Nothing better to start the day off with than a bowl of Monopoly cereal that has 500 grams of sugar in each bite. Although cereal isn't as popular anymore compared to other breakfast foods, and I mean not popular at all, cereal used to have this crazy hold on the American breakfast market. Every single kid would be down in bowls of this stuff every Saturday morning while watching the pretty colors and flashing lights on the TV. And nowhere was breakfast cereal more popular than the late 90s and early 2000s. Every single cereal brand was at the top of their game, not to mention every single person and their grandma was getting a cereal dedicated to themselves. Spider-Man, Buzz Lightyear, Pokemon, Rugrats in Paris, Fairly Odd Parents, Yu-Gi-Oh, the goddamn Monopoly Man? If you had a sliver of popularity, you'd be getting a berry-flavored bowl of sugary death. Despite the giant surge in popularity, cereal companies wanted more. They wanted to get even more children to buy their cereal, and what better way to do so than by offering free stuff? Now this isn't a foreign concept. The idea of putting toys in cereal boxes is as old as time itself. I bet you the first ever caveman pulled a rock out of his box of rock flavored cereal and lost his shit. However, instead of putting toys in cereal boxes, cereal companies wanted to capitalize on the hottest new theme from the late 90s and early 2000s, and that was none other than good old video games. It was a genius tactic. Not only does little Johnny get a bowl of sugar for breakfast, but also a free computer game for the same price. <laughs> Granted, these video games would range from genuinely good PC titles to hot garbage to whatever the hell this is. So today, we'll be taking a look at some of these computer games that were included in cereal boxes in the late 90s and early 2000s. Let's start with what was probably the most well-known example, 50 free hours AOL, baby! Also, Chex Quest, I guess. Chex Quest is easily the most popular example of cereal box video games. Released in 1996, Chex Quest was a first person shooter that was bundled with boxes of Chex because, let's be real, nobody wants to eat Chex so they had to do something to get sales up. Chex Quest isn't just a regular built from the ground up game, it's actually a mod of Doom that aimed to not only give it a Chex steamy, but completely shift the tone of the original game. You know, instead of blood, guts, and firearms, it's green goop and, uh, magic TV remotes. You know, if you really miss the guns from Doom, I might know a guy who could get you some. Founder, buddy, listen, I get you're trying to run a business here, but... What if I throw in 53 hours of AOL? We'll talk later. Before we get started here, something you might notice right away is that almost every single game we talk about here has AOL included. That's because to cut costs, General Mills partnered with AOL to produce the CDs. It's like if Discord partnered with YoPlay to make a yogurt themed version of Fortnite to include in Gogurt boxes. Anyways, enough of me wishing that was a real thing, let's get into the game. First off, the menu is identical to Doom, except with a goo and checks theme. Yeah, instead of fighting demons and monsters from hell, you fight, uh, phlegmoids, which are these weird green goo monsters. Now these changes aren't that big of a deal. I believe they did a good job at replacing all of the gore and stuff to make it kid friendly. Except for the difficulty select screen, I'd much rather choose bring it on or I own doom rather than not so sticky and super slimy. The gameplay is, once again, just Doom. It's a first person shooter that has you navigating through different levels, finding various power ups, different weapons, and health and armor to help you fight the goo men. The biggest difference is definitely the theming. First of all, the weapons have been replaced with these futuristic red energy weapons. Uh, you also get a spoon as the melee, which I think is neat. 
Second of all, you can't forget that the only reason Chex made this was to sell you on Chex cereal. So everywhere you go, there's just random Chex logos plastered on the walls. There's even one permanently on the bottom right of your screen. I can't imagine what life must be like having to see that all the time. Other than that, there's not much to cover here. The game is much shorter, only being five levels instead of the dozens in the original Doom. Overall, it's definitely an interesting game. You don't see anything like this done today. If you're in the mood for a slimier version of Doom where your main weapon is a magic Wii remote and you just love advertising, this is your game. Well, hey, at least the advertising wasn't like crammed down your throat. The only thing you should be cramming down your throat is the delicious taste of Czech cereal. But that's what we're looking for here. If we want to sell cereal, we have to engrave it in the youth's minds. We need to ditch subtlety. If you insist. This was a bad idea. This was a bad idea. Ah, Captain Crunch. Not only does it absolutely brutalize the inside of your mouth, but it also decided to dive into the world of technology inside your bowl of greens. Captain Crunch's Crunchling Adventure was once again another serial-themed computer game included in various boxes of Captain Crunch. However, unlike Chex Quest, this full-on embraces the serial branding. Chex Quest had some random logos around the place, and the character looked like a Chex beast, but that was just about it. This game, however, is full of Captain Crunch. Everything has something to do with Captain Crunch, but we'll get to that soon. The game opens up with Jesus Christ, what am I looking at? This game was made in 1999 and it very much shows. This is what happens when a serial company in the 90s tries to make a 3D game. Nightmare fuel. Anyways, as you can imagine, there's a deep rooted lore in this game, an ingredient called Crunchium, which makes Captain Crunch taste like, well, Captain Crunch, has stopped being produced. The captain himself checks out the factory only to find out that someone had committed grand larceny and stole the crunchium. And because two wrongs make a right, it's up to you to kidnap and raise a crunchling creature whose sole purpose is to produce cereal that you profit off of until they die. I never thought I'd be questioning the ethics of Captain Crunch. First things first, make a crunchling. Spray it down with some paint that will permanently dye their skin and hair. Give it a cool name, all while the craziest midi beats are playing. After you've created your cereal making gremlin, you're thrown into this weird cave factory place. Oh, it's not that bad. I used to have a place just like this in Nebraska. Oh yeah, show me some proof. Send me a picture right now. You have a food and happiness meter. Feed the Crunchling various Captain Crunch cereals to raise the food meter, which falls from the Captain Crunch pipes to feed the Crunchling so that the Crunchling can produce Crunchium. No more crunch! This is a very basic pet simulator. Feed the pet and raise its happiness meter by petting it on the head. Not doing these doesn't really hold a penalty, the captain just gets pissed and reminds you to do so. You also have three stats, speed, jumping, and strength. You can level up these stats by clicking on them and doing various mini games. Also, when you leave the cave to do the mini games, there's nothing behind the door, it's just more rocks. The mini games are very generic and honestly have nothing to do with the Captain Crunch theme, which honestly is a godsend. I'll take any opportunity to get away from this wrinkly old man. First is strength training in the uh, dinosaur world. Why the captain drops us in the middle of the fucking dinosaur extinction to make cereal, the world may never know. Basically, you throw rocks at other rocks. There's not much to it. Do that for about a minute and congratulations, you've made zero progress. Next up is jump training in your computer CPU. Once again, it's a super simple mini game, a jump up the platform as fast as possible to reach the top. Also, you can collect these cereal pieces to do something. I don't really know what they do. Once you finish the level, you'll once again make zero progress. The developers really wanted to make you play this game for as long as possible, as you'd have to grind out these mini games for an eternity to get max stats. Anyway, last but certainly not least, you have speed training. In this mini game, you have to race a turtle in Backwardia, a backwards world. Uh, just jump over obstacles and make it to the finish before the turtle does. If you get hit by a single object, you basically just lose. The turtle's just way too fast for some reason. However, the worst offender of all is that there's a Gatorade ad. Why this cereal advertisement needed another advertisement inside of it is beyond me. Also, unlike everything else, the Gatorade stand isn't backwards. You just, you can't have the consumerism ineligible. So those are the three mini games. Th that's it, there's nothing else you could do. You could challenge the Crunchium Thief, but I could also not do that. 
this game definitely was not as fun as Chex Quest. It felt way more like it was trying to sell me something instead of being a good game. I swear, if I hear the word crunch one more time, I'm gonna f***ing lose it. So, those were the cereal box games that were actually based on the cereals. Sure, the games weren't that good, but I mean, their mere existence is actually pretty cool. But you gotta look at the big picture here. Sure, advertising by making cereal themed games is a good method, but that takes way too much time and money. What if instead we just steal the greatest computer games of all time and throw them into cereal boxes? Alright, I like it. So what game were you thinking? Boggle. Cereal box video games hit their conclusion around 2000, when General Mills partnered with various video game companies like Infogrames and Hasbro to cram a bunch of random PC games into your Frosted Flakes. The games ranged from actual quality titles, from Roller Coaster Tycoon to, uh, Shoots and Ladders. Sure, why not? We're gonna quickly talk about a couple of these games, and see that if getting these games for free was a steal, or was Operation for Windows 98 bad? Damn, bro, they got the Minecraft cereal? First up is Candyland, which is arguably already one of the worst board games in existence, so let's see how this PC game improves it. Right off the bat, 1045 hours of free AOL, that's a steal. The game starts up and the menu is very simple. I really hope no amount of loneliness can ever bring someone to play single player Candyland. Either way, the rules are simple. Pick a color, move to that color, and get to the end. I really hope you got all of that because I am not repeating myself. There's these weird 3D cutscenes that play whenever you move spots, and you can click on various areas to meet up with the characters from the lands. Not that you'd want to do that. There's not much else to talk about here, except for the fact that the sonic rain sound effect and the Mr. Krabs walking sound effect are both used. And away we go! <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait a second! <laughs> Yeah, stolen properties are the best kind of properties. Also, one of the voice actors in this game is John St. John. You know, the voice actor for Duke Nukem. I wonder if he remembers doing this. Next up is Operation, also based on the board game. After booting up the game, you make a doctor's license. Why people go through medical school when you could just do this? It's beyond me. The gameplay is split up into two parts, the surgery parts and the mini game. All the worlds have the surgery part, where you have to avoid obstacles and drag items out of the patient like in the board game. The mini game is unique to the world you're in. It can be anything from Vor to Vor. There's five different worlds you could choose from. You have the caveman world, where you treat dinosaurs and swim in stomach acid. The hospital, where you mostly treat humans, and I realize how terrifying this angle looks during the surgery parts. Space world, where you treat aliens and fly around in an ugly 3D helicopter. Monster world, where you treat scary fellas and turn into a frog. And finally, animal world, where I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be sued for malpractice. Honestly, it's not that bad for a free PC game. It was a slightly enjoyable time. It even let me print out my own certificate. Look mom, I did it! Next up is the game of life, and oh god, get it away from me! The 3D graphics in this game are so bad. Whoever chose this art style needs to be locked away for a very long time. Is that Comic Sans? This is really just the game of life, except I can't control my mouse properly. Uh, seriously, the mouse had to be maneuvered so precisely. I don't know, maybe my control setup just isn't ideal. My biggest issue with this game, however, is that there's just too much going on here. It looks like my screen has been flooded with 90s 3D graphics vomit. But I will say, I I do like the tiny mini games you get to play when landing on a space. It makes it feel more video gamey. Now, I still don't understand why anyone would gather around the family computer to play a board game, but for something that came out of my cereal box, I guess it's not a bad deal. Lego Creator. The downloader was really weird for this one. It looked like a Disney DVD intro. What video game has commercials? Honestly, this game is pretty cool in concept. It's a Lego sandbox game where you could build. It should be a million dollar idea, but it kind of reeks. The controls are wonky. You can't use your keyboard to control the camera or anything. You have to click on the controls on your right. It could get pretty annoying at times. Also, the way building works is weird. You have to place blocks individually instead of having a paintbrush like tool where you could just keep placing blocks after selecting it. These are just some nitpicks though, it could be an alright time waster. The customization and options were pretty diverse for the time, and hey, exploding a bunch of stuff is always a fun time. Don't quote me on that. Monopoly Jr. is a game that exists. It's basically a watered down version of Monopoly for kids. Upon opening up the game, I do think the 3D graphics finally work in the game's favor. I like how round the Monopoly man's head looks. I mean, look, I, I could kiss it. The menu is also very similar to Candyland. I'm beginning to notice a pattern with these PC board games. And 
I can't play it. And like I mentioned earlier, my setup is a bit primitive, so no matter what methods I tried, I couldn't click on the damn little blue car. Zero out of ten. I'm a, I will be writing Hasbro a very angry letter about this later on. And last but certainly not least, who wants to be a millionaire? This is probably the most enjoyable out of these games for me, maybe because I'm a sucker for game shows, who knows. The music on the installer also goes unnecessarily hard. The game is just the game show. Choose a number of players, pick a name, and start answering questions. If you don't start the game fast enough, my man Regis Philbin will not wait for you. Okay, no game for you today. Come back next year. Maybe soup then. Maybe game then. Maybe never! It's just like the game show. Answer questions, move up in money amount, and you have three lifelines. There's not much to say, except if you lose before making anything, you get a check made out for zero dollars. It's just like my real job. Serial box video games will always be a cool part of video game history. Sure, there is zero chance of hell this is ever going to happen again, but it was a really cool thing to have a whole video game in your cereal box. Or Candyland, that was more of like a spiritual experience. Oh, enough babble out of you. After playing all of these games, I've come up with the perfect solution to save your cereal companies. Really? What is it? Hear me out. What if we put katanas inside of Cheerio boxes? Fonder? That has got to be the greatest f***ing idea I've ever heard! Let's go a million dollars, baby! Yeah, my bad.